we're going to manage it by, by grazing because the alternative is uh, chemical control. There's something about spraying glyphosate into the 20 hectares of wetland environment that just doesn't feel right with that biodiversity in there. So I really wanted a win-win situation where I could keep that high monacne because it's an important part of my business here, but keep it under control. The cattle will utilise that in the dry times and they, they will exactly when you want it and they will chew it down close to the ground. And then if you time that correctly, the wet season comes along, it puts a metre or so of water over and that really knocks the high monacne around. It doesn't kill it, but it definitely subdues it, which is the perfect scenario. So that's the balance we're trying to, to achieve. And that the project actually gives me the ability to manipulate the water levels in that lagoon uh, to, to the point where coming towards the wet season, if it's still too high, because the cattle don't like to go out there and graze up to their belly in water, but they do love following the, the water in. So, so I can manipulate the water level. The fish are still happy. They've got their refuge pools and their channels and the cattle are following that high acne in, which is doing good things for my bank balance. It's doing good things for the control of the acne. It's a win-win situation. Jason has been doing ongoing sort of environmental restoration, working in with his cattle grazing operations for a number of years now. Um, but just over the last few years, there's been a funding opportunity to work in the wetland itself. Uh, the, the bulk of the earthworks were done in the dry season of 2022, and that included digging larger refuge pools, um, connecting those refuge pools with a deeper channel and then levelling out some of the areas to improve the drainage during the dry season so you're not left with pockets of, of shallow water where um, the water quality can get quite bad and then when it rains again that poor water quality can enter the main wetland and cause issues for the other fish that are in there. Um, and then as part of those works we also did a, a fish ladder that was to improve connectivity between the estuary, which is right next door, and the freshwater ponded pastures. I didn't realise the, the amount of work and design and the, and the effort that had to go into that simple pathway that I'd asked for to facilitate the movement. So a lot of science has gone into it, a lot of work has gone into it, and uh, I'm, I'm so happy with the result. And uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great feeling to stand there with the water flowing down that ladder, knowing that in the past, it was only, you know, depending on the rainfall of event, a couple of days maybe where fish might have had the opportunity to get in. Now, now it flows for a couple of weeks and that whole time fish are utilising that. And it's quite fascinating to see the productivity of those systems. When you see the amount of fish and the amount of wildlife that are feeding on those fish, the ecosystem that it's, that it's uh, supplying, it, it, it's quite sobering. So, so my goal is to get those fish back out to allow them to complete their life cycle like they should, like nature intends and to get them back out in the marine environment for the enjoyment of everybody.